are house sales collapsing in British Columbia and Ontario? Because something happened the first week of April. Something really happened. Like things slowed right down in those two provinces after April, first week of April. Like they are, we're, this is the last, it's coming up on the last week in April. And every realtor that I know, and on tip, some of them are liars, okay? But like, I'm telling you, the non-lying real estate agents that I know in Ontario and BC are saying, what the f oh, happened here? Like, the buyers are gone. They're just gone. There's a few sellers. Get to that in a minute. By the way, Canada's a big country. Sales are just fine in Alberta, Calgary, Edmonton. Sales are just fine. Sales are fine in Quebec. Montreal's going fine. There's things are happening in Halifax. Okay, like it's it's a small market, but it's fine. But BC and Ontario, whoo! I think it's fucked up um, because it's just gone quiet, quiet. So, what's the reasons? All right. Let's think about it for a minute. In a market of batshit crazy house prices in BC and Ontario, the buyers are incredibly sensitive to mortgage rates. So in January and February, first week of March, we had uh, somewhat better rates. We had a lot of rates that started with a four. They were high fours at 499, 489, 494, 509, stuff like that. That's gone. Now we've got rates that are mostly all in the fives, like some mid fives, some lower fives, but all fives. So what does that mean? Is that small a change? Like it's half a percent or a quarter percent or 35 bips, 35 basis points. Is it that big a deal? Hell yes, because it's buyer sentiment. It's buyer sentiment. Oh, rates have come down. Oh, Bank of Canada might come down in April. Oh, yeah. think, everything, everything could change. I hear reading a lot of stuff about it's going to get better. And if it gets rates get better, everybody's going to run out and buy. So I better buy because I've been planning on buying. So I got to jump in before everybody jumps in and the prices go wacky. So it's buyer sentiment. Well, guess what? Buyer sentiment in those two very expensive house price provinces has turned the other way. Oh, these rates have gone up. I'm just going to wait. I mean... Maybe it's July, maybe it's, but I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Now, there's some other badass stuff going on. Let's, let's hear it out. Condos. Cheap dog crate. When I say cheap, they're half a million dollars for a dog crate, like 485 square feet, 450 square feet. Some of the crazy ones are like 395 square feet. Ho oh, ho, small. Yeah, I don't know what you do in those. But anyway. The market has just fallen to pieces in that area. Now, because, you know, some people's jobs are affected, the economy is slowly grinding down and people say, well, my job doesn't look good. I'm going to move back with my parents. I'm going to do this. I'm going to move in. I'm going to get a roommate. We're, we, we do, we're going to have, occupy less space. Rents, believe it or not, are falling slightly in a time of year where they're normally rising in the GTA. That ain't good. Not good for people who are landlords of dog great condos. So there's that inventory has been building and building for the last month that 200 new condos just added in a week last week to try to sell. So that ain't good. Now let's think about the future though of these small condos. There are in the next two years, this end of this year and all of 2025 and half of 2026, there's 50,000 new condos coming on stream in Ontario. 50,000. Now, yes, we have a lot of newcomers. Sure we do. But if you're somebody who's being careful about working, watching the market and you think your condo isn't going up in price at all, it may be coming down in price and you think your mortgage is going up because the rates are going up, you might think, holy shit, I better sell now. Okay. Yes. People who are landlords think about this stuff. They like you and I might not care because we're not landlords, but if you are a landlord, you think about this stuff constantly, okay? Because that's where we're at. Rate movements, month on month, quarter on quarter are closely watched. 
the future of rental properties is being closely watched, of, of, of small condos is being closely watched in Ontario. And maybe the economy is, is going to ratchet. Okay, slowly, quietly going to ratchet. Because here's the thing. We know that new construction is dead. If you're not building those rentals, those rental apartments that the Liberal government supported in the federal federal their federal plans for housing, which is fine. We need we need rentals, we need purpose built rentals, all good. But if you're not building those, the number of new home starts, new construction starts for homes to buy in the GTA is approaching zero. In most of southwestern Ontario, it's approaching zero. In parts of most parts of Metro Vancouver, it's approaching zero because so the math doesn't work. The math doesn't work. The players involved are scared. Now, sure, there's some new, new subdivisions going up in distant places. They may be building something new in Agassiz. They may be building something new in Revelstoke. They may be building something new in... Yeah, sure, they're building tons new in Calgary, tons new in Edmonton, and they might be building something in, I don't know, Peterborough. Who knows? But in the GT, in the heartland of new construction, it's dead. So those people are starting to think about not working, and that's something very new. So we're going to see some trouble. That's my prediction. Now, will a uh, drop in the Bank of Canada rate save everything? It'll help, but I'm starting to think it's not going to save anything, everything. I'm not, I'm not, I'm starting to think a rate change is not going to fix the world. Things are changing in housing.